The situation inside Syria is as close to hell as we are likely to find on this earth. You have just watched the video, very brief. So I may not be able to describe uh, what the situation will be like inside Syria. And therefore, I'll try to be very brief. I visited uh, all the camps, uh, but I have personally not been able to visit uh, Syria during this uh, crisis time. But I have visited several times before, before the crisis. So I can easily imagine then what kind of situation would be there. It must be terrible. As I said, it is as close to hell, as close to hell. So I cannot, uh, it's really a heartbreaking. Helicopters you have seen drop viral bombs on homes and schools. Families move desperately from one town to another in search of safety. But I know that people are resilient. As we have seen, just a two-week-old uh, two, two baby. Nearly one child in three is out of school. In some areas, women and girls are enslaved. In others, children, the sick and the elderly are at risk of malnutrition and starvation. Untold numbers of people have died in secret prisons and detention centers. We need to have a due approach that will end these horrors and bring systems hope of a better future. The negotiation is very difficult. And even, I think, operations may be very difficult. But it is, again, the United Nations, who should be a very impartial organization, ICRC and Red Crescent, they are impartial and neutral organizations, but they are not able to be able to have an access. That's a real uh, problem because of all these uh, check posts and all different, different uh, political reasons. Syrians need basic services. Farmers, who are mostly women, need tools and seeds so they can feed their families and generations, generate incomes. If we are to stop the most able and qualified Syrians from leaving their country, they need confidence that they can do more than just survive. We must build on initiatives such as UNICEF's No Lost Generation campaign and my special envoy Gordon Brown's proposal to get one million Syrian children into school in Jordan, Lebanon, and Turkey. These steps will require substantial financial commitment, new partnerships, and innovative thinking. The members of the International Syria Sup Support Group have a special responsibility to push for results. Without progress on the ground, the chaos in Syria will only deepen. And I thank you for your very generous support and compassionate leadership. Thank you very much. Thank you.